Hello. So at the end of the last video, the, um, the last question was what happens when the null hypothesis changes? I changed the null hypothesis from 80 to 78. And with, but the data are the same. Data numbers are the same. And the significance level is same at 1%. And what is the conclusion? Uh, like I show you all three cases uh, just remember here, 78 I applied, 78, and t statistic is now plus 2. Previously it was minus 2, it's plus 2. So p value calculated from the t statistic is uh, the same, 4.55%. And critical values use 78 as the center now, and this area, this part is the same. So if you use these three guys, like all of them imply you uh, do not reject the null hypothesis at 1%. You do not reject the null hypothesis. That means, oh, the null hypothesis is accepted. That means the I-beams are small. I-beams are smaller than the correct size. It's wrong. So then what is surprising here is, remember, I did not change the data. The data are the same. But what happens is when I used the null hypothesis of <coughs> 80, <coughs> it was not rejected, which means the I beams are correct in the earlier examples. But at the last question, I changed my null hypothesis to 78. This was not rejected either. And that means not, it is not rejected means I beams are small. So with the same, from the same data, depending on your null hypothesis, your conclusions are totally different. The implications are totally different. This is possible because earlier I said hypothesis testing is not a fair procedure. It's, it's not neutral in some sense. So the hypothesis testing always favors the null hypothesis. So what you choose the what you choose as the null hypothesis affects your result directly. It matters a lot. So you have to be conservative in making the uh, null hypothesis and should be careful. Okay, the last example of this chapter is about the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, by the way, I just use this as an example, but the numbers are not real. Of course, I use just simple numbers for simple algebra, uh, just motivated from many news uh, articles these days. So uh, it shows how you in, how you implement the null hypothesis, uh, the hypothesis testing when the underlying data are binary. So think about this. Uh, suppose you developed, you have yourself developed a vaccine for a new vaccine for COVID-19, and uh, it it builds antibodies with probability 80%, which is pretty not bad. It's not bad, uh, but anyhow, it's fake. And I want to test the following hypothesis. I be you believe the probability of antibodies making antibodies is 80% after vaccination and alternative is not. So, so we are interested in the probability of antibodies after vaccination. That is the parameter of our interest. So to test this uh, hypothesis, we uh, consider this underlying variable. So you choose a random person who got the vaccine and observe if the person has antibodies or not. If yes, you record as one. If not, zero. Success, failure, right? Exactly the binary variable structure. And then remember, in a binary distribution, P, the probability of success, equals the population mean, right? The mean equals 
probability of success. So we are going to use the hypothesis testing uh, framework for the mean on the probability. And also, also remember that in the binary distribution structure, the standard deviation is given by the probability of success, the parameter p. So p times 1 minus p was variance. And taking the square root, you get standard deviation. So this is a review, brief review of uh, what we learned in chapter 5. And then, now we believe uh, the parameter p is 80%. So from that belief, you calculate the standard deviation like this, using the formula. So the standard deviation is 0.4 according to your hypothesis. So this is unique. Remember, uh, earlier, like say, for example, when you calculate confidence interval for, say, pres presidential election, presidential election was, uh, the underlying structure was the same, same as the binary distribution. But at that time, we calculated the standard deviation from the sample, from the observed sample, because there was no way, no other a clue to calculate the standard deviation. But now, in hypothesis testing, we are going to calculate the standard deviation from the hypothesis, not from the data, because that's our philosophy. We believe in our hypothesis first, before looking at the data. So data is contaminated by random errors, but my belief is not. So I use my belief purely uh, from my belief. I calculate the standard deviation in this way. So, so then, like your belief, your hypothesis determines the mean and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, right? By the central limit theorem, you know x bar follows approximately follows a normal distribution with p and standard deviation, mean and standard deviation, which are given by 0.8 and 0.4. Sample size, uh, to, to, to determine the sample size, you have to look at the data. So far, we did not look at the data at all. We get to this point without the data. So now, you observe 100 uh, pe people who got vaccinated. And then you find antibodies from 25 uh, people, right? Uh, then what is the p-value? Can you find the p-value? So a uh, hint is here, so the, the antibody rate is 75%. So you believe it was 80%, but it, it, in the data it's only 75%, so there is a 5% point difference. That difference should be standardized and then based on that t statistic you have to find the p-value. We have calculated the standard deviation earlier and here is the sample size. So you have everything. Calculate the p-value. Pause the video if you need more time. The answer is like this. So it goes like this. t statistic, remember, T statistic is the difference between the sample average and the hypothesis. In this case, in the sample, the, the antibody rate is 75%, 0.75, and your hypothesis was 80%. And the difference is standardized by standard deviation of 0.4, which is from the null distribution, and sample size was 100. So, as a result, you get a t-statistic of minus 1.25. So, using this t-statistic, we are going to calculate the probability outside plus minus 1.25. So, smaller than minus 1.25 and greater than plus 1.25. That probability is 21.13% according to 
the standard normal distribution calculator, right? So p-value is 21% approximately. Then given the p-value, now you can make the decision. Among 1, 5, and 10%, find all the significance levels that reject the null hypothesis. It should be uh, straightforward, a simple comparison. And the answer is, so remember, you reject the null hypothesis when p-value is smaller than alpha. But in this case, p-value is greater than all of these three guys. So none of them can reject the null hypothesis. Your null hypothesis is not rejected, right? And finally, um, let's use the critical value approach as an exercise. Uh, if you use 5% significance level, find the critical values that correspond to uh, the data. The answer is, you calculate it this way. So critical values are given by these, and the null hypothesis is 0.8, and z value is 1.96 because the significance level was 5%, and standard deviation 0.4, sample size 100. Just put those numbers, then you will get those numbers. So critical values are from 72.16% up to 87.84%. Then, again, what you did not use in this calculation was 75% uh, uh, sample value, the, the antibody rate from the sample, 75%. So comparing the critical values and the sample average, can you reject the null hypothesis or not? Okay, uh, remember the critical values are defining the acceptance region. Acceptance region is between those two points and your sample average is 75% which is exactly between those two numbers. So you cannot reject the null hypothesis. You cannot reject the null hypothesis. The answer is B. So uh, that's just for comparison. Uh, finally, just a comparison, the confidence interval is calculated in a similar way, but the difference is standard deviation is calculated from the sample average. So remember the difference is confidence interval is calculated from the data without any prejudice. Data is just everything you have. So the standard deviation is calculated from the uh, the probability of success implied by the sample. However, in hypothesis testing, this part is following from uh, the standard deviation is calculated from your hypothesis, which is more important than the data, right, in, in that framework. So that is one of the major differences, interesting difference uh, between estimation and hypothesis testing. That shows the stark difference in their attitude toward inference. Okay, this is the end of this chapter and, uh, and uh, from, from next week I'm going to uh, start chapter 10, uh, chapter 10, right. So uh, I think I don't have enough time so I, I have to finish one chapter every two weeks, every two lectures so I may need to hurry and I may uh, I may I may record uh, longer lectures so it's getting getting longer and yeah thank you for following so far uh, if you need any help let me know it's near the end of the semester uh, enjoy the rest of the week rest of the day and see you later bye